All right, in this video, we're going to cover optimizing your website's images for better mobile performance on Cellular. So a lot of the times we build these websites with these large images, and while they work great on the desktop and they're optimized for the desktop, a lot of times they could be pretty heavy in weight and take a while to download on mobile devices when mobile devices are on Cellular. The other thing is sometimes when mobile devices look at these pages, things that things get moved around a little bit. It's called responsive mode. And it may not work exactly the way that you want it to. So what we're going to cover is we're going to cover how to optimize images, but we're also going to cover how to use the mo uh, Divi modules in order to control what goes on a mobile device and what doesn't. So one of the things that we're going to look at is how do you develop and tell what your website looks like in mobile. Well, let's take a look at this. This is Firefox, and up in the top right-hand corner, we have the option to select Web Developer Tools, and in Web Developer Tools, we can go into Responsive Design Mode. And this is a tool that will give you the ability to see what your website looks like on mobile devices without having to jump back and forth to your phone all the time. We can come over here, and underneath the device list, we can select like a iPhone SE uh, 6S. And this is what the website's going to look like when it's delivered on an iPhone success. As you can see, things are all stacked on here. And everything's laid out pretty nice and pretty evenly. But you may not necessarily want all of this up here at the top. You may want to move it down to the bottom. You may not want it at all. You may want to look at your image sizes. And you may want to look at whether or not I want to display images at all. Is, is this image actually valuable on the home page for my message? We're going to show you how to take care of that. You can also come over here and take a look at what things look like on different tablets. Apple Air. So this is what it looks like on a tablet in landscape mode. And again, this stuff we may want to keep and we may not. So let's take a look at how that works. So how, how do we know what our visitors' web sizes, or it's called viewport, what size those viewports are when they're visiting our website? So let's take a look at some Google Analytics real quick. Let's jump over here. Here we have a sample data of a website for the last 30 days. I like busting this out a little bit further, you know, anywhere from three to six months worth. So that way we can get a good sample size and some good metrics. So the first thing we're going to do is take a look at mobile and let's do an overview. So this is going to show us between mobile, which is in this case phones, desktops, and tablets. And you can see 45% of all the traffic to this particular website in the last several months is done on mobile phones. 42% is on desktops and then you have your 11% on tablets. So let's jump over here and look at these viewport sizes. We'll go back to technology. We'll go to browser. We'll click on screen resolutions. So here's our different screen resolution sizes. And we can correlate these directly with what we're seeing over here. So if we hit 360 by 640, we can actually come up here and type that in. So that's what 360 by 640 looks like. And this is what this these visitors are seeing. And in this particular case, it's one of our most popular sizes. Let's come down to 1920 by 1080. So we can come up here and we can type in 1920 by what was that? 1080. And we may have to make this a little bigger, which is probably going to be almost as big as our whole video is. It is. It's right there. So that's what this is. This website is looking at. These are people that are probably viewing the website on a standard 1080p mon monitor, and they're viewing it the whole page. So what does all this mean? Let's go back to a tablet view. This means that we can change the size of these images and deliver specific images at specific sizes for these different viewports. And here's a classic example. If we right click on this image and hit view image info, 
we're going to see that this image is 2,300 pixels by 2,300 pixels, and it's being scaled down to 387 by 387. This image is a half a megabyte big. So that doesn't sound like a lot, but when you stack a whole bunch of these on a page, it could get pretty extensive. But what would it look, what would the size be if we looked at it at 387 pixels wide? Well, let's take a look at that. So here's our image in Photoshop. And if we go to save this image as is, we can see right here it's 490K, which is a half a megabyte. So if I shrink this down to 387, that's going to take that down to 18K. That's a significant decrease in file weight. And that image would load much faster on a mobile device than the other one did, especially over a cellular network. So you can see by having images scaled for mobile that you're going to get a significant increase in speed. But what does that mean? How do we do that? Okay, let's take a look at that. Divi gives us the ability to control what gets displayed on desktops, tablets, and mobile devices. Desktops and mobile devices are pretty self-explanatory. Tablets get a little confusing, so you gotta pay attention to the orientation. In this particular case, we have the iPad up here. This is landscape, and then portrait would be in this mode. When De Divi delivers content to a tablet that's in landscape mode, it's going to deliver the desktop version. When it's in portrait mode, it's going to deliver the tablet version. Not exactly sure why they did that, but that's the way it is. So you need to remember that when you are working with the tablet option in what gets displayed. So let's take a look at what that looks like. Let's go ahead and update this image with a, with a one that's optimized for mobile devices. So we'll go ahead and bring this down here so we can see it. So as you can tell right now, if I hit view image info this is going to be the 2300 version of the image and it's scaled down to 331 pixels so let's get out of here and let's go add a new version of the exact same image but optimized specifically for mobile devices here's our code for the back end of this page here's the section we're working on over here let's take a look at this image so here's our image and if you click on advanced, you can come down to the bottom and you can see that this is not disabled on any other device. Another way to get to that is you can right click the hamburger button and you can look at the disabled tabs. If you disable it on something, it'll turn it red. So let's make a copy. We're going to use this one for mobile phones. We're going to use this one for desktop and tablets. So the first thing we need to do is let's change the title and let's disable it. So we'll go down to advance. Let's disable it on phones so it doesn't display. Hit save. Go back to con go back to content and let's give it a name. So I just put in something simple for me to know what it is and we'll hit exit. Okay, so now this one's disabled on mobile phones. If, but we'll delete that. We'll hit update so we can see it. Let's just take a look at it one step at a time. So if I hit reload, that bad boy's gone. It's not there anymore. Now, we'll just go ahead and make a quick copy again. Let's go ahead and edit this. We'll tell it this is gonna be the phone version. We'll go to advanced. We'll activate it on the phone, deactivate it on the tablets. Let's go back to content. Now we need to create a new image and we need to upload it. By the way, this image is really too big for the desktop too for the way it's being used, but that's another story. So let's go back to Photoshop. Here's our image. We'll go ahead and get, get ready to save it. And you can use any editor to any photo editor to do your resizing. I use Photoshop. We're not going to cover the Photoshop stuff in here. There's other videos and and uh, more detail can be added later. But let's change this down to, I'm going to change it down to 400 pixels wide. That's about as big as I can think it would be used around in this area on a mobile phone. And that'll cover a variety of different sizes. So we'll go ahead and save that to the desktop. 
We'll call this drive. We'll give it another name. We'll call it 400. Now it's on my desktop. So we'll come back over here and upload this one. Just drag and drop it right on there. So you can see this is the 400 version. It's only 20K instead of a half a mag. 20K is better than 500K. So we'll hit update and update. So now if I reload this page, there's my image back again. If I right click on it and hit view image info, I can see now it's a 400 pixel wide at 20K. So this is significantly faster on a mobile device. Yeah, in, whether they're on network or on cellular, this, this page is going to explode and just be right there with all the information. So it's very important to optimize your images for mobile devices. So what's the next step? Let's take a look down here. We have excellence and professionals. You may find a need where no images. You don't want any images at all. You want this page to load. You want it to be text. You don't want these images on here dragging it down at all. So the next thing you can do, very simple, come down to your next row. You can right click. You can hit disable. You can select which is however you want to disable these. You can select which ones you want to be on there and which ones not. We'll hit update. We'll come back and hit reload. Now they're gone. Those images are just not there. So that'll load up that page too because it doesn't have to load those images. What if I want to what if I do want to load those images, but I want a different configuration for mobile so that it looks better and it works better. Instead of having text, image, text, image, maybe I want one image on top and then text below it. So let's take a look at that is. First, let's undo what we just did. So we'll go ahead and activate these. So now we're back to the four. So there's our four images. So we're going to pick this one and we're going to put it on top. So not only can we deactivate and activate via modules, but we can deactivate and activate on rows and sections. In this particular case, we're going to do a row. So we're not going to change anything at the module level. We're going to change it at the row level. Let's make a duplicate of what we had. Let's right click and we're going to disable this on mobile phones altogether. So this row is for desktops and tablets. This one's going to be for phones. We're going to get rid of that last image. We're going to rearrange these. So that image is over here. And we're going to disable that on tablets. You got to make sure it disables it. We're going to disable it on tablets and desktop. So now we have our own version right here for mobile phones. And if you want, you can rename these so that when it's collapsed, you know what they are. So if I collapse this, I can see what it is, row for my phone. So let's go ahead. Now that they're renamed, let's go ahead and drop this column off. So we'll go to our column tool. We'll switch this over to thirds, thirds, and thirds so that it will stay lined up and all of our padding will be consistent. Now that we're finished with that, let's go ahead and hit update. And let's hit reload. So now my image is up on top and my text is below there. So that's about it. You can you can take care of this for everything. For instance, if we wanted to get rid of that, again, it's just come over here to the sign up code. We'll just tell the whole section to disable it on mobile phones and hit update. You have a lot of control over how you can manipulate what's going to show up on a mobile device and what's not going to show up on a mobile device. Now we're super clean.